Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Big day today. We are starting on a new project. So for those of you who don't recall, Solo Music Gear recently sent me a couple of guitar kits. Uh, which I'm very excited to try out. They seem like good quality kits. I opened up the Telecaster kit recently. You probably will have seen that. And it all seemed pretty good. So, nice thing about these kits. They're not particularly expensive, but they seem to be very high quality for what you're paying. And I am excited to get started on them. I've made a decision here. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. If I was just going to do a basic build on it and be like, here's how this goes together. Or if I was going to do something a little more ambitious. And I've opted for something a little more ambitious, because hey, why the hell not? So what we're going to do is take this reasonably inexpensive guitar kit and try and turn it into something awesome. This is going to be a full length series, it's going to be several videos, uh, and it's going to be fairly in depth. So if you're already a guitar builder, I don't know what to tell you, maybe you already know all this and, and it's boring. I'll try and keep it interesting, but if, if you don't want to see it, hey, skip to the end and see how it turns out. Anyway, today we're going to get started with kind of the initial setup. If you're doing a guitar kit, ideally you set it up before you actually build it. Make sure everything's working properly. Make sure everything is aligned. So we're going to do that mock-up today. Make sure it's all going to look good. And uh, I'm still kind of thinking up what I'm going to do as I go here. So if you have suggestions, um, I may not follow them. But feel free to let me know in the comment section below and I will read all of them. So let's get started with that mock-up, shall we? All right guys, first things first, the neck has to fit in here. It has to fit reasonably well. So what you wanna do first, make sure that that is the case. Check your neck pocket. And ideally what we're looking for is a nice snug fit, okay? So this neck ah, fits in here nice and tight. Not like that last guitar kit I built. That's a good snug fit. I can take the neck and lift up the guitar, all right? That's what you want. You want a neck that fits in there well enough that you can actually pick up the guitar with it. If it doesn't fit in there that well, then you can end up with some issues with, uh, with transfer, which affects the vibration of the strings, which is not good. And just generally, it's not a good idea to have it like that. So now that we know the neck fits, we're gonna bolt it on there. It's a bolt on neck. It's got this nice rubber plate to keep from creating damage with the metal one, but you don't have to use that if you don't want. The nice other, well, it's not rubber, it's plastic, but the nice other part is that it matches the binding. So I'm going to be using it because I think it's going to look good. All right, so start off with here, and I'm trying to make this move relatively quickly so I don't have to edit out half of it for you. We're just going to bolt this neck on. All right, if you're doing a glue up neck, this becomes a little bit more complicated, this mock-up part. You don't have to attach the neck completely. I'm doing it to be on the safe side, all right? I want this, uh, this setup to be as true to finish or whatever, tr true to my finished product as I, it can be, so I can make sure that everything is gonna be good when I do my final setup. Now, Noted, I do plan on replacing some parts when I get to my final setup. Um, but for now, I just want to make sure that everything is going to line up well. Sometimes you get these kits and the neck goes kind of at a, a bit of an angle, not enough to make it look ridiculous, but enough that if you just set up the bridge wherever you think it's supposed to go based on the holes in there, sometimes it's not straight. You don't want to run into that situation, believe me. If you have a kit like my last one from Guitar Fetish, which had the um, flame maple neck, which was, you know, a book match veneer, then that creates its own problem because that one, the neck didn't go on straight, but I centered my bridge on the veneer so that it wouldn't look friggin' stupid. And well, it looked good, but it played friggin' stupid. All right, neck's on. It's on there nice and sturdy. There's. Nothing wrong with it, all right? Next up, let's get the bridge in. Obviously, we're not wiring this today. That would be ridiculous. But we do need to get it bolted in place, so I am gonna pass the wires through here just to get them out of my way. So the pickup sits in there, and then I can put my four bridge screws in. 
This is relatively convenient anyway. I mean, it's just, it's just a, a few minutes with a number two Phillips and your guitar is basically together. Now again, like for the neck, I could have just put in two screws. For the bridge, I could quite easily just put in two screws. But I'm gonna do all four, just to kind of be on the safe side here. All right, bridge is in. Now what we need to do is check how the strings are gonna run down here. You can do that, I did it earlier in my last video just with a straight edge, just to kind of make sure that things were, you know, pretty good. This time I'm gonna do it with the actual strings because, let's be honest, the strings that come in these inexpensive guitar kits are crap, um, most likely. I can't really speak for these ones because I've never played them. Who knows, maybe, maybe Solo Music Gear decided to give me some decent ones. But I don't trust that, so I'm not gonna actually use those when all's said and done. What I am gonna use them for is this, because why not? It's better than just throwing them out immediately. Uh, I also tend to keep the occasional old string to use as, well, basically soldering wire um, for grounding and stuff. So that's something you can do as well. It saves a little bit of, little bit of money. They're obviously conductive, so they work for that. So I'm gonna put in my two opposite strings. That's what I need. I need both E's in there. Double check where that all lines up. Yeah, pretty simple. I need to run one string down either side through the channels and into the bridge to make sure that everything's gonna line up. So these are actually really easy to put on, um, which is nice. You just take this, put it through the back so that it lines up. It's pretty straightforward. Throw your washer on there. And then these guys screw in from the top. And we'll cover that more in depth when we do this for real, obviously. But for today, just gonna gently put that on there, kinda hand tight, because we're gonna be taking it off again right away anyway. So now I've got low E and high E kind of in place there. And I'm gonna take those two strings and put them on. Now while I'm doing this, I'll just comment on this guitar in general. This has a, a light coat of sealer put on it, all right? So I don't know how familiar you guys are with finishing at this point. If you've watched a bunch of my videos, probably pretty familiar. But a coat, one coat of sealer like that, what it does is it raises the grain. So when you get this kit, the grain is very rough, all right? It feels very rough. That's because they've already got some sealer in there filling up some of the grain. If you're doing a stain job, you're pretty much gonna wanna sand that out. Um, I'm not, I'm gonna do a paint job on this. So for me, that's not an issue. But again, stain job, you're probably gonna wanna sand most of that out so that your stain gets in there properly. Otherwise, your stain job is gonna come out a lot lighter than you expect most likely because your stain's simply not going to go into the grain because the grain's already gonna be partially sealed. I hope that all makes sense. So, if you're doing a paint job, having a coat of sealer in there is just one less coat that you need to put on after, and it's already raised up the grain for you, so you can go ahead and sand to get that grain flattened out again. Grain only raises once, so really it just saves you a step. All right, let's have a look at this. All right, so that's what we're dealing with. That all looks pretty good to me. Lots of room on either side of the string to work with. All looks good. All right, so now we've established that the neck is straight, the strings go on properly. That stuff's all very important, okay? Once that's done, we move on to what is most likely, I think most of us would agree, the most important part of the guitar. So for this, I'm just gonna move the strings off to the side. I'm gonna loosen them up to do that, of course. The most important part of the guitar is the neck, all right? The neck and the frets, if they aren't set up properly, this thing's never gonna play right, and there's no real point in building it if we're looking for a high quality item. 
So one thing we're going to want to do is check our scale length. All right. Scale length is measured from the nut to where the string hits the bridge. In between, you've got all your frets, and your fret distances are based on your scale length. If your fret distances are off, your guitar is not going to play properly. So first thing, we check what our scale length is. This one is 25 and a half inches. That's a pretty common scale length. Next up, you go online if you want, or if you have a book, so be it. Check what your fret distances are and measure them. You don't have to measure all of them, just make sure that, you know, I don't know, like five, nine, and 12 are all correct, and then chances are the rest are fine. This one, I've already done all of this. I'm not gonna waste your time watching me measure stuff. I've checked online with a 25 and a half inch scale length, and my frets are accurate, as one would expect from a decent guitar kit. Next, we have to look at the frets themselves. So let's take our 25 and a half inch straight edge, if you've got one. Uh, Ideally, you have one. If you don't, you might want to chop up a ruler to get the uh, to get a fake one, basically. But ideally, you have an actual straight edge because they're nice and thick and you know reliably straight. Apparently, I'm just going to put mine on backward. Anyway, we put this on here and check how straight our neck is. So I need to loosen up my truss rod in order to get this, you know properly straight so that I can check my frets. I'm going to do that now. There are plenty of tutorials out there on it, but the truss rod adjustment is right in here. You turn it to the left to loosen, to the right to tighten. If you're bent this way, you need to loosen that, all right? That's not good. If you're bent this way, you need to tighten it. So this one needs to be loosened up a bit. We want to get the fretboard as close to level as possible to be able to check it. All right, so there you go. Get that nice and flat, and then you need to make sure that your frets are level, all right? Now, sometimes it's not bad to just go ahead and level them regardless, but you don't necessarily have to do that. What you need is a fret rocker, all right? And you put it down on three frets and see if it rocks. And if it does, then the middle fret out of the three is high. Like here, for example, my middle fret's just a little bit high, it's barely rocking. Or, one of the frets on the outside is low. So in this case, I had my middle one rocking here, this one's a bit low. So that's the actual problem. Same deal, it's because this guy is just a bit low. All right, so make sure you're only bridging three frets. Once you move to a point where you're bridging four, it's time to switch to a different edge. That's why all the edges are different lengths. All right, so each edge is gonna work for a different section of the guitar. As you get down into the very small frets, or very small distances between the frets, you're gonna need to move to the smaller edge, okay? So I've found out now that this guy is gonna need leveling. If it didn't need leveling, my next step would be to check the crowning and the edges. This guy is not sharp on the edges. They've actually been relatively nicely rounded, which is surprising. For an inexpensive guitar kit, usually they're like razor sharp on the edge and you have to do a bunch of filing. Uh, and the crowning is actually okay, but that doesn't really matter. I have to flatten this anyway, or I'm going to. So I'll be redoing all of that regardless. So we're gonna have a nice video on working with the neck. Aside from that, uh, now that we know, know that that needs to be done, everything's straight, that was the important part. We're basically ready to move on and start working on this thing. If you guys are interested in following along with this build, uh, please check out the link below to my kit.com kit for these. You can pick one up and, uh, and yeah, follow along. Or check out solomusicgear.com and purchase one from there if you want. Either way, uh, yeah. They're definitely available and you can follow along with the substantial amount of stuff that I'm gonna be doing to this guitar. I'm pointing over there because that's where the guitar is. 
So stay tuned. In the next video, we're probably going to take a crack at this neck or alternatively, we'll start doing some of the sanding work on here. It all needs to get done. I think I'm also going to bevel out this part, you know, so that's, you know, that's, that's nice and rounded right now, um, but it's not going to be as comfortable to play as if I have a nice bevel on there like a lot of them do. The part for the leg is going to be just fine the way it is, but this I want to bevel out for my rib cage, so we'll cover how to do that. There's actually really nice fret access on here, so I'm not sure if I'm going to mess with it, but I might. I might carve out some of this. There's really not a whole lot to it. It's, it's very easy to just take a little bit of that out in order to give yourself more comfortable access to the top frets. I'm feeling it right now and it's really not necessary. So we'll see, I might just do it for demo purposes. And then yeah, we'll get started on any kind of routing and stuff that we wanna do. And then move on to the part that you guys all watch me for anyway, the finishing. So as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to check these guys out, Solo Music Gear, they sent me this, they did me a big favor, so check them out if you wanna follow along, pick one up. Please subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay up to date with this one. And hey, share it with your friends if you want. I never ask people to do that, but that yeah, was the first time for everything. Yeah, that's about it. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.